Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from inside of the Old Bird Farmhouse. It is another stormy, rainy day outside in Georgia today. So perfect day to come do some more work inside of the house. In fact, the thunder was so loud earlier it was shaking the windows of the house. Pretty cool. Uh, so today we're going to be working back in the uh, area where there's a hole in the floor. Fun fact, it's actually easier to get like trash and stuff from over there now that there's no floor here than it was when there was a floor here because, you know, we won't fall through anymore. We're already on the ground. So anyway, I'm going to start cleaning up uh, this area a little bit. I've got to go a little bit further back with the wood here. So I need to push further back that way. And I also need to pull all of the nails out of the beams here in preparation to get some new floor joist in here. So let's get it done. I actually should have filmed this in real time, pulling out one of these big old square nail spikes out of the uh, out of the beam there. That took a little bit. Let's see if we can get another one out on real time so we can hear all the crunching and squeaking as the 140 year old spike is finally released from the old pine. All right, let's see if we can get this one out as easy as we did the other one. We give it a couple taps to start loosening it up. Got to put some actual force against it. Nope. That one says it ain't coming out. All right, I think I've got a bigger pry bar. All right, we got the big pry bar on it now. Let's see. Oh, there it is. These are not easy to take out. I dented my wood too. Let's make sure that's solid right there. So that would be bad news if there's any kind of decay in these, but it's It's good. It's got, well, it has one soft spot right there, but it's overall, it's good. Yeah. One big spike out. A bunch more to go. Alright, so I seriously have to rethink how I'm removing some of the nails out of here. I think I'm going to bring a disc grinder out here, or a cutting wheel on a, on a disc grinder, and just cut them off because they are, they're not pulling out of this wood, and I don't just want to hammer them all into the wood. But anyway, that's, uh, that's where we're at now because I just uncovered a bunch more under the front door here. See all these sticking out right here? They ain't coming out and I don't just want to drive them into the woods. So yeah, we're going to have to bring out a cutting wheel and just snip all this stuff off. All right, so since that part of the plan is done, I pushed that back just a little bit, got that entire main beam exposed. Remind me to show that main beam to y'all before we leave in great detail. Uh, I'm going to, now that we've got solid ground to stand on here, I'm going to go ahead and start pushing back this way just a little bit. Um, obviously we're going to need a floor here, which was the whole point of doing this putting in a new floor to move out stuff like that uh, but we can go ahead and get some of the smaller stuff up while we're waiting on the uh, floor joists to put in a new floor
all right so we made it a little ways further back in there it's still it's it's funny to me that it's actually easier to go through and clean that stuff standing on the ground than it was when there was a floor that you kept putting your foot through over here anyways you guys saw in the time lapse this is the point in which it really gets slowed down because this isn't like just going through and throwing everything here away it's been described as by people who aren't me um, as like an archaeological dig um, because you'll find a bunch of junk you saw me just now going through a bunch of papers and whatnot and those were um, most of it was old bills and stuff like that stuff that just needed to go uh, but then we found old pictures in there and even if we had to touch you know a hundred other items to save this old postcard from 1999 or this old picture this picture is actually of the farm if you guys remember a few videos back i was mowing the dangerous curve well that's it looking back towards the farm anyway um you know i have to touch a hundred items but we were able to save that stuff and i think that's very important also, I'm pretty hard on these newspapers usually in the fact that I just get rid of them, but these I haven't yet, and uh, I'll show you why. So these are uh, Columbus Inquirer, um, it's Columbus Ledger Inquirer now, um, from 1975. And I just thought it might be cool one day to kind of look through these and see what was going on at these different times. Like this one says, new probe urged at Warm Springs. It's Warm Springs, Georgia. Um, it looks like an uh, investigation of operations at Georgia Warm Springs Hospital and the Georgia Rehabilitation Center in Warm Springs by a professional team outside state government. Um, and just other stuff like that, you know, interesting old local news. Now, that was the Columbus Inquirer. This is the Columbus Ledger from 75. There are two different newspapers then. City kids keeping busy dancing in the streets. Ex teacher gets charged with forgery. Just, you know, some kind of neat stuff to look through here one day. Here's the Army Times from 75, too. So, just kind of, you know, one reason that. We really slow down when going through all of this stuff in the house. I'm gonna set these over in the other room for now, along with those pictures. Um, actually, we're about to go back into this room. Set those there for now, move them in a minute. Um, we're about to hop back up in there because I wanna patch the floor. Um, not gonna be anything done the right way not over there because all of this floor is going to have to be pulled out as well and redone just like we did here but right now we can still use that as a functional floor i just want to go ahead and fill the holes up um, so i have moved as much of this as i could take today i also said i wanted to show you this big beam here oh look at that look at that would you now, I wonder if that is actually pencil work from when this house was built. I mean, I guess it has to be. I was thinking maybe it could be if the floor was ever taken up and redone, but I don't see any signs of that. So I guess that's just pencil work from uh, back when this house was built. I wonder what they were marking right there. That is pretty cool. It'd be fun to find a name written on one of these beams or a date or something like that. But that's it. This is what the actual house sits on here. Not just the floors, but the whole house. And then I'm going to get my disc grinder and cut off wheel and cut off all these nails. Another day, do the same thing over here. Get all that stuff out. Actually, I need to pull this board out. So I tell you what, before we jump up in that room, let me see if I can go ahead and convince this board to come out. So this board I'm about to pull out is actually not original to the house because this was originally not a big doorway like this. It was just a single doorway here, uh, but at some later time in more modern era, it was opened up to be this big doorway. Um, there's some details you can see uh, that if I remember to show you on this video, 
um, I'll show you, but this would have been added in as a new threshold here when this doorway was opened up like this. Actually kind of the same thing that happened behind you where I showed you the beam that had the, the wood uh, pencil drawing on it. Um, that used to be a wall with a doorway right there. So that was actually changed at some point. So it would have had new wood added down as well. So maybe that mark wasn't from completely modern times. Or maybe it was. I don't know. It could have been marking where one of the original 2x4s sat, though. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and try to get this one up without uh, breaking it, because it's still a nice piece of wood, even though it's not original. It's a hammer, and my pry bar is somewhere. minimal, with no breakage, minimal resistance. Yeah, that board is actually super, super relatively modern. And a bunch more of these little finishing nails through here that are super hard to get out. Let me show you the detail of this door, how you can see that this was originally a single doorway. So first I'll say they did a really good job of matching this to the house. It's using original trim, but that top piece has been extended out. And these are actually a little bit lower than the original door would have been because you can still see where the original door was. You see right there, that little gap up there would have come down right here and been a doorway right there. So originally, when you walked into this house, in the front door, all right, we just walked into this house, you would have had a single door there, a single door there, a single door back there, and then a single door right here. There was also a wall here that was removed. You can see the split in the beaded board up there where that wall was removed. Um, so originally just a big four room house plus the kitchen with a straight through hallway. Um, you can see there was a transom over that door back there. And just like there's a transom over that window right there. So kind of neat, kind of neat. All the changes. And you can see too who I was talking about that I had to remove this floor before I was really able to get in here and clean everything out. Um, we've got super heavy stuff. There's that filing cabinet or a locker. We got a um, some kind of fancy furniture right there, an old refrigerator back there, a bunch of different stuff in there that just would not have rolled over this rotted floor right here. Then over here, of course, we've got piano and stuff. But at least we can stand here and start taking stuff from there um, but without falling through now, which is very nice. And very soon we will have new floor here. Just got to get the boards on out here. Um, so I want to go ahead and try to patch these holes real quick just to make our construction room over here sturdy as well. All right, so obviously we got holes in the floor here. And thankfully we have some leftover OSB where I was, you know, doing the super, come out of there, the super unprofessional patch job over there so we can do our super unprofessional patch job over here as well. Measure twice, cut once, right? Well, I eyeballed it. What? Jump! I think I need a new saw blade. Also, the battery's probably dead.
That battery's got more juice in it. Yeah, the blade seems to be fine. Definitely was the battery. All right, all we're doing right now is just covering up the hole. These screws are too long. But they're all I had. Here at the moment. So they'll do. That's the big hole. Right there. With the little hole right beside it. Hit the stud that time. The joist, I mean. Dang, I eyeballed that pretty good. Pretty spot on. Yeah, it takes some of the mounts out too. Because it's just tightening everything up. Um, if only I'd hit the, uh, the joist right there. We've got another small hole here, but I think I'm going to rip that piece of OSB down so I can just cover that one and then get that other one over there. Did y'all hear that crunch back there? There's another place that needs another patch. Like I said, this whole floor is going to have to come up eventually anyway. We're just covering up the holes right now. I don't know why all I have are really long screws here. I thought that I had some shorter ones. Where's the tape measure at? I think these floor joists are spaced 24 inches apart. So let's see if I can get both joists here. Oh, I missed it right there. Or it's bad. Let's see. That should be on another one. What do you think? You think I'll hit it or not? Hey, pretty good, Robert. Pretty good. Got it going on here. We got it going on. Right about there. Oh, I'm sure I won't be able to hit this one. But I'd be wrong, because it did. It's all patchy now. It's amazing. Wow. I started to say it's amazing how just those couple of patches really tightened this floor up. Now it still bounces and I wouldn't jump up and down on this floor because it like will break all those uh, floor joists under there. But just those two patches really just tightened the floor up. It's too bad they're only patches. I'm going to make sure I set the trash bag out on camera, otherwise people will never believe it. pictures over here for now. So I think 
that's going to do it for me out here on the old bird farm today. We got some stuff done, and in the next day or so, we'll be putting in floor joists and starting to lay down our new OSB subfloor. So that is super exciting for me. And then we'll just keep it going. Keep cleaning that way through the house. That's another really soft spot right there. I don't have another really small board, do I? Don't believe I do. I don't have to remember to catch that sometime. Anyway, um, as we continue going through the old bird farmhouse, cleaning that way, replace the floor, we can get a lot more done. That way, once we have stable ground to work on, a stable floor to work on, and then we'll just keep going through and replacing floors and whipping this house back into shape. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go buy a t-shirt if you you know if you'd like to. Go buy a t-shirt, and we'll see you next time out here on the old bird farm. Really, buy buy a t-shirt for me because I really want to put a window air conditioner unit in here. It is humid here in Georgia.